Giants fans, how are we doing? As always, I'm joined by the OG Jordan, Mr. Frost. How are we doing, pal? Yeah, good, mate. Good, mate. How are you? I'm very well, mate. I'm very well excited to be here, as always. Uh, and our special guest, you've probably already seen him, but if you listen to us on Spotify or Google Podcasts, you should read the description. Jordan Whelan, introduce yourself, man. Hi, right, guys. Good to be here. The, the birthday boy himself. How are you doing, mate? You good? Yeah, I'm all right. Just enjoying my day. You know, you guys have got a very, very, uh, a lot amount of time today. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here on my birthday. You know what I mean? You guys, oh, no. you guys, you guys are up here. I really, <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Have you spoken to your mum yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So, as we always do here, we deep dive into your past. We give you the boring stats. We talk about recent, recent games. Uh, so obviously, first of all, we're going to start off with how are you doing in rehab, man? How's how's your ankle? Yeah, good. I've actually I've actually just come from a rehab session, so um, yeah, it's, it's getting there now. So I've been three week three weeks out now, I think, pretty much. Yeah. Um, since I like did the injury against Cheshire, uh, at the end of that Sky game. Um, but yes, yeah, feeling good. Um, getting there. So hopefully. Um, make a comeback really soon or as soon as possible. I didn't even see it, you know, mate. I didn't. I didn't actually even see it. It was only. Uh, it was only mm. like I spoke. I spoke to Wolfie, and he just said, like, you know, like, after you actually sat out for most of the game, he said, yeah, it wasn't good even going into the uh, the Surrey game. So yeah, great. Yeah, because we had the so I had the injury, and then obviously we had the isolation period. Um, so it was kind of tough for me to to get you know some treatment that I, I maybe would have liked. Um, as soon as I kind of got the injury, um, it was a tough time. But you know, with COVID and stuff, we're having to do things a certain way, and um, you know, health comes first, safety comes first. So, so yeah, did did what I could, did what I could at home um, to get right. Um, but I wasn't quite ready for that that first game, um, as you, you know, I only lasted a minute forty seconds. So, so no, you got you got three points still. Three more <laughs> yeah. points than I scored in the BBL. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> efficient. Yeah, one, one leg, I'm still efficient. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, obviously, we know you're going through rehab and that. Um, we, we don't want to go into too much detail about, like, where it is and everything, but, like, where are you getting rehabbed at? Like, what are you doing to battle it and maintain yourself? Yeah, so, actually, we've had, like, a really good kind of support system. Um, kind of got uh, diagnosed and and checked out with uh, Altius Healthcare um, at first. And now I've been passed over to... Um, to Wayne Richards, uh, he's working. A, he's a strength and conditioning coach um, over at GB GB Taekwondo. Uh, oh, obviously, does his own got his own clients and stuff as well. So, um, so I'm in, I'm in really good hands. Um, so I'm at a GB facility. I'm getting getting some good rehab and working. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Have you have you been um, like just standing and shooting the ball just to keep you going, or is it just straight up rehab? Yeah, at first, obviously, I didn't want to do too much. So, um, yeah, I was messing messing around with the ball a little bit whilst watching the guys practice and getting my own treatment and things. But other than that, uh, that was sort of the, for probably for the first week. Um, didn't start doing kind of movement stuff until like the second week, strengthening second week um, and having massage and stuff throughout the whole whole kind of time. Uh, and this week, yeah, I put in some really good, like heavy, a bit more heavy kind of stress on on a, on more game like kind of movements and stuff like that, just to make sure I'm like ready to get back this time. So hopefully we'll be all good. Well, yeah. from from the uh, recent pictures that we've seen uh, of Harry shooting of you, 
I don't, I don't think you need any help in the bicep, tricep and shoulder area, mate. You look like you've been hitting the gym a bit this season. <laughs> yeah, that was, one, that was one of my, my focuses coming to this season. I wanted to, be, you know, get a little bit of weight on from, from where I was last year in, in London and, uh, you know, got got the home food. So I'm getting all the gains from, <laughs> oh, I love that. from here to there. Yeah, so, so, yeah, yeah. Wanted to, wanted to be a bit more of a force kind of this year and, you know, bank, bank, bang people about rather than you know getting bumped around myself so yeah, yeah definitely definitely up there this season you know just to kind of strip it all back you know you mentioned about being at home and stuff like where did it all start for you mate like where you know what got you into it? we've all got our own story 90% of them are I watched Space Jam took my top off and I had a vest <laughs> on when I was a kid you know <laughs> you know where did it all start for you mate no, yeah, basketball is kind of just in the blood for me um, runs, runs through the family my dad's side my dad's a coach um, and also played uh, when he was younger um, in Derby. Uh, my mum is the main kind of force as well when it comes to basketball. Uh, she was the captain of the Cameroon national squad. What? Uh, I didn't even know that, you know. Yeah, the women's <laughs> so she, she, you know, she played pro, um, had a stint at Georgetown, a big college in the States, um, yeah. and then actually uh, and did a master's at Salford University and, and, and played with them and, and I think a little bit with Cheshire and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, she's she's been around, she's been around and yeah, you don't want to mess with her. You don't want to mess <laughs> yeah. with her. Definitely, yeah, I'm just thinking the same. I, I should be about, I should be about six, eight. I should be. <laughs> 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 oh, no. I mean, as you can clearly see by our, our shock and in our voices and faces, we, we, didn't, we didn't do that good research of you, mate, but we got some, we got some other stuff. <laughs> In fact, we didn't even know that. <laughs> but yeah, man, so you, you say obviously it starts run, running for your blood. Um, I'm assuming you were born with a size one basketball in your hand, like ready to go, and then just kind of yeah. like shooting around with your brother and parents from there? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, parents, my brother. Yeah, that's it. Um, what was the pressure like? Well, was it a lot of pressure? No, nah, no, nah, not really. Not really. I don't know. I don't know if it was because obviously my mum, my mum played women's and stuff. Um, so obviously coming, you know, there's always differences coming into like the men's game as well. Um, so yeah, I didn't, didn't really feel any any kind of pressure uh, from that. Um, feeling pressure now because my younger brother's, you know, he's Killing he's it. six. An inch taller than me, a bigger wingspan. He's doing well. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to one on ones over the summer. Um, oh, yeah. That's the only kind of pressure I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you say like, like when he comes back over the summer, you're gonna have that one on one. Be honest, mate. Who's winning that? Who's, who's better? Look, look, <laughs> look. I'm big. I'm big, bro. Out here. That's 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 all you need to know. Wow. Uh, so, so that answer there. I like so, that. So you so, so, uh, <laughs> Can we get this on record? Jordan's saying that he's big brother. He's going he's to beat Patrick any day of the week. Um, can I ask who's better at passing the theory test out of the two of you? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> you know what? You've led me down the garden path there. I knew you? that. I knew that. <laughs> This wasn't even planned. That's crazy. That's oh, MI5 that's stuff for you, that mate. That's <laughs> MI5 stuff for you. Theory test. That's that's Pat. That's Pat all day. I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we got in contact with him just off a whim to see if we could bring up any stories. And the first one okay. he came up, the first one he came up with was that straight away. And he was like, "Ask him who's better at passing the theory, and ask him who passed first time." <laughs> It wasn't even a hesitation. <laughs> it was like, it literally, message sent, seen, typing, back, boom, two minutes, not even an issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got that on me as well. As well, I, as, well as the better beard game, all of that. <laughs> oh, God, I love that. I love how that worked out there. That, we, we couldn't have even, you know, literally, we, we practiced what we were going to do for that about four times and straight away, you just, you just did it for us there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so <laughs> sorry I'm, 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 I think we're just really proud of ourselves for that one um, <laughs> yeah, you've done well, done well. <laughs> so obviously we talk about your injury and you've been out since 
so, uh, obviously start the Surrey game. Um, I was talking to a few people in the camp and obviously you went off so quickly in that game that we heard and talked to a few people and, and they said, you know, that changed our complete game plan. You know, I, I think that was your first or second time starting this season after coming off the bench and yeah. being forced off the bench. And that game plan just completely changed from that minute or so that was in the game. What, if you don't mind me asking, what was the game plan of that game? What, what like, from bringing you off the bench to a starting role, starting role, what was the game plan there? It was it was more kind of like just with matchups. Um, so I was I kind of started off with with Tony Tony Hicks, uh, point guard at Surrey Scorchers. Um, we felt like felt like that was a good matchup for me to go kind of head to head with with him um, based on like height and stuff like that and quickness. Um, yeah, that was that's that's literally probably probably the only the only kind of reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, just yeah. It's tough as well, he's a good player. Him, he's a really good player. You know, so you, it's a shame he didn't work out because you in for a good game there. Yeah, definitely. And I've I've seen him. I've seen him a few times before. I think I, I played against him um, a couple of years back uh, when I was actually with Giants and with Danny. Right. Um, it was. It was. I think I got the better of him. Like, <laughs> I've actually, they <laughs> they won. The they won the game. But in terms of the one on one matchup, I had I had thirty five. So I. I don't know. So I'd like to say I know him inside out. <laughs> it, it was, you know, I felt gutted for you because you could just see you was absolutely seething. Like, and, you know, yeah. nothing, you know, you travelled five hours to get down there, you know, and within, what was it, yeah. eight forty six, you know, you sat on the bench knowing your game's over. Like, it, yeah, it, it, it was one of them. It was like, it wasn't kind of like as bad as, as when I first initially did the injury after the Cheshire game. Um, yeah. So I knew it wasn't as bad as that. But once I tweaked it, I was like, you know what? There's no point even like trying to, you know, tie up my shoelace a little bit tighter and tighter and try and play finish out the game because yeah. I'm just gonna yeah. gonna hinder like the team performance and might as well do it really early, get myself out of the game and let them get get a feel back um, yeah. early on, um, rather than kind of mess with like the momentum and stuff like that. Um, so I just kind of was like, you know what, I think the right decision is to just you know check out and as soon as I can and, and let the guys regroup and get back to work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that, that that game just was obviously we, we've talked about Jack being absolutely manhandled all over, uh, but that that game that game just obviously you went down with your ankle, Hepson came out with his hamstring, Jack didn't pass uh, the protocol for concussion with the elbow. Like, what 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 happened in that game? I, I know I know we had like um, a layoff due to COVID and the isolation, but we, we just seemed to have get it was like a Royal Rumble <laughs> where everyone just dropped. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know, I always say this about about playing Surrey away at their gym. It's like, for me, it's it's one of the harder places to actually go to um, and play against them at home. Uh, it's always for me. It's always been a scrappy game. It's always been um, a little bit different, a different environment. So even like the gym itself um, is a different environment to other gyms that we kind of kind of play in. Um, so I always kind of leave it down to that at Surrey. And if you can leave Surrey with a with a good win, um, you know, job done. You take it. I think uh, OG Jordan here. Um, he messaged me during the game, and that, I think it was just before the game as you were warming up. Um, and he was like, "It's going to be a tough one, this mate." I was like, "Well, no, like we knew that going down." And he went, "No, no, they've got them horrible short shot rims that don't move anywhere." Oh, yeah, God, they... the sound on oh. them. Oh. <laughs> like we sure I found with short shot rim rim conferences is several ones. Some of them, like I've never heard sounds like it. Like it literally sounds like you're throwing it off your bathtub. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's ridiculous. A like clank. <laughs> yeah. Like, and, and they were throwing shots with guys like yourself and stuff who just, you know, hit open threes in your sleep. It's just go boom for four. Oh, it's gonna be a long night. This. <laughs> a long night oh. this. Yeah, yeah. That, so just like I said, like it's all, all of that stuff, you know, the gym itself um, is smaller than other BBL gyms. So you know, you got the depth, you got the depth perception and stuff like that. And then you know, obviously the rims, the rims are a little bit different. The, the floors a little rough. Uh, the one that they still got, there's a few few dead spots and stuff about. Um, so yeah, it's a tough place to go to. And, and that surely and shouldn't be happening. That sure. I mean, it, I play. You know, I played at like Reddish, and you know, I played actually one of your what, what like like locals ones. Uh, obviously, you live in Warrington. I played at Warrington Ball Hall. There's a few in there, you know. And I just think at BBL standard, that shouldn't be happening. Dead spots, you know, where like say Breon's backing down, and all of a sudden the ball's just in the floor. <laughs> like you know, it just shouldn't happen, man, should it? 
Yeah, no, it should it, it shouldn't it shouldn't happen. Um, there, there's got a lot of regulation. I don't know if that's down to each club itself at the minute, or if the league is gonna kind of like regulate that as a whole. But um, yeah. but yeah, definitely shouldn't be shouldn't be like that for sure. Yeah, like I said, they were they were slightly rough as well, weren't they? We saw Jack on the receiver. They had to pick up like the smallest guy on the planet to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Jack had a tough one. Props, yeah. to, props to Jack. He's 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 a dog. He's a dog. You get. Oh, oh he's, he's, there it is. Hey, there it is. He's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. I, got, I got a shout out to the dogs. That's dog work. Big man um, Ulf is not going to be happy with that. <laughs> he, knows, he, he knows. He knows we're the dogs. We're the dogs. Yeah. No. Love it, man. We, we call it Kennel Club. <laughs> <laughs> speaking yeah, of uh, speaking of Northwest Ballers, I've been speaking to a few of my mates who who you know. One of them, uh, Mr. Pilkington. Oh yeah, Danny Pilkington, yeah, man. Yeah, so I caught him. I caught him with him yeah. this morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know uh, Danny Yates as well. Danny Yates, yeah, I know yeah, Danny Yates. Yeah, yeah. So oh. speaking to them, uh, just got a, like like a little thing from uh, Pilko. Uh, he just said played a Magic together, one D three. You was a junior at the time. He said junior. Uh, I was a junior. At the time. Yeah, but he said it was. It, it, you could still see the talent there straight away. Like he said, you you, you smashed the league. Like he said, the, the talent was there straight away. Yeah, I appreciate that from Phil Coe, man. He definitely yeah, he helped me out a lot actually. You know, back back then, um, did look up to him. He was he's a good guy. He was you know he lives kind of like towards round 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 this way as well. Um, yeah. He was run, running me to practice here and there actually as well. Um, he probably I don't know if you mentioned that or not, but um, but yeah, he's a great guy. Actually. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's you know he's a great guy. That speaks 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 a world about him, really. To be fair, um, yeah, always got time for for Danny. Yeah, yeah. I got a I got one because I played in a, in a in a tournament a while back um, with a tournament team. We take over to Ireland, me, Danny Yates, and a few others, uh, and I actually won the tip against Pilko. <laughs> and we were, oh, yeah. we was at the uh, we was at the uh, the foul line, and he started. He said about his ankle. Uh, oh, I wasn't going to play last night because my ankle was hurting. And I, and I thought, <laughs> yeah, right. You got like two inches on me, mate. No chance. I'm not having that. And then he mentioned it this morning, and, and we we're just laughing to each other like it was class. So yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, good guy, man. Good guy. Well, you, you say you say that you looked up to him uh, as a bit of a role model when you were in your junior. At, down at the Magic, um, have you had any kind of? And I think obviously the obvious answer is your parents and your brother. But if you yeah. talk about BBL history or NBA or anyone anyone overseas, who was your idol growing up? Look, watching someone growing up, um, I've had a few in in NBA. Um, I love watching Derrick Rose in, in his MVP. His MVP seasons, um, just just how dynamic he was and stuff like that. I've always seen myself as kind of like a more dynamic energy type player as well. So yeah, uh, yeah really liked liked his game. Um, BBL, yeah. Growing up, I watched I watched kind of like the Manchester Magic Division One team every like Saturday when they had a game. Um, Stefan Gill, oh. Steve Gale, um, you know, Cal Cal Jones, all the all these guys, man. Um, that uh, I've, I've grown up, I've grown up watching uh, from Manchester, so they've all played a part really um, in kind of like my childhood experiences and 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 how I've like played the game and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, definitely. I, I just found it amazing. Like cause I went down down to Magic for a while, and I found it amazing. Like this, the, the talent. I mean, I know we're not a small city, but you know some of the some of the players who, who've gone abroad and played. You know, John Amici. You know, it, it, just players like you yeah. know who. You know, there's so much, you know, talent in, in this area. Like, and it's only now that, that I see people really sort of sort of coming from it. I think that was a kind of a golden age when we was a bit younger, you know, because from, from throughout National League, Magic won every league they was in, no matter what. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, really you know, dumb at one point, yeah. Yeah, and, the, and then they had, like, the D1 team. I think the, the, they had an American over, Ellis Cooper or something he was called, and he was yeah. an unbelievable player, you know. And, like, uh, I just thought to myself, they, like... Literally, Manchester is running everything within this basketball, and it's such a shame, like you know, with it just going down a little bit. But from speaking to Pilkum and stuff, because he was there last year, you know, it really sounds like like it's on the up as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've not I've, over the last few years, obviously, I've, I've been away and stuff like that. Um, I've always come back over the summers to the Meet Centre. We, you know, we run we run scrimmages and stuff over 
whatever. So I kind of check in. Um, but most of the most of the, the youth guys are kind of off. It's not kind of like they're off off season time as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah to, uh, really see, haven't really got to see in the last couple of years really the ins and outs. You know how you know the program is at each you know age group. Uh, oh, which I was, hoping this, I was hoping this year I'll, I'll be able to check out a bit more. Um, obviously, yeah. we'll cope by that, and then some of them aren't playing. Um, yeah. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing that in in future. You know, being in Manchester. So yeah. yeah. When, when, I love how it hasn't changed as well. Oh, sorry, Jay. No, <laughs> sorry. I, lo I love how it hasn't changed. Like you know, they still got them old school Reebok rims, and you know, <laughs> it's yeah. and I love it. <laughs> oh man, that's home for me always. Yeah. When you were came back to scrimmage on the side, did you, did you still try and fit in your little like magic vest as well? <laughs> <laughs> I've still got so many of those little <laughs> magic vests about, you know. <laughs> I, there's I always to... one kid. There's always one kid in training somewhere, whatever in Manchester. He's got like the, the magic thing. It's got like the Manchester emblem. It's like number three hundred and seventy-four thousand, like there. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. That's yeah, so yeah. true. Like, I went to a summer camp once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me great memories on some of those summer camps. But yeah, those numbers, those, <laughs> they seemed em endless at one point. Yeah. <laughs> so like, obviously that kind of brings me to the next bit. Like, obviously then you sort of made a step up to Giants, you know. Yeah. Um, at the time, I don't think we had the Americans license at the time, did we? When you were there in the first year. Did we have an Americans? I don't think we did. The start uh, of this season? No, no, no. The, your first season at Giants. A couple of years back. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't think they had any Americans, did we? We had, No, yeah, we did. When oh, did I, So I, I didn't play a full season uh, with Giants. I played like... So my actual full season was in Germany. It was my first year in Germany. Yeah. Um, I, came, I came back. Mm -hmm. I actually went to watch a game. A few of the guys were... I knew, I knew a couple of the players that were playing. Jack Crook. Yeah, um, yeah, big, big Jack. Yeah, Big Jack, he was playing. So I kind of thought, oh, let me go and check out what's going on with Giants. Went to a game. Uh, Danny was coaching. Um, next thing I know, I'm getting a message. Uh, oh, I didn't didn't realise you were back. Do you want to, you, you know, you fancy <laughs> kitting up for the, last, for the last 10 games of the season? Whilst I think yeah. Cal Cal was going to, um, uh, was it Commonwealth? It in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He went yeah. To yeah. In with the England team. So obviously they, they would be missing him. Um, so I, I kind of said, all right, cool. I'm in, I'm in shape. I've just got back. You know, why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Right, I but I only played for 10 games. Um, there was a couple of Americans uh, on the team. But it was David, David Kadiri. Oh, that's yeah, the first season we got it. Yeah, the first season we yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those guys. Yeah. So, like, how does that... Because it must be... Obviously, you know, you, you then went, went away for a couple of years. And then this whole rebrand thing happened. What what was your thoughts on the rebrand when the approach? Because you was like the poster boy, weren't you? You know, you you was the first sort of announced signing. You know, we knew maybe you know Ulfi might have came back and you know Jack Hudson, but you was the first sort of poster boy signing. How did it happen? Did, you know, we spoke to DJ about Jamie speaking to him for forty five minutes and DJ didn't get a word in. You know, how did this happen? You know, you know how did it happen? You know, what what were your thoughts on the rebrand? Yeah, my thoughts were. Yeah, it was needed. It, it was time. For, it was time for a rebrand. Like, if you know, if a new owner, I've, I said on, on another podcast, you know, if a new if a new owner is going to come in and uh, buy the club, it's always nice to see that he's got a plan for it. Uh, and the rebrand kind of just went hand in hand. Um, and I think they kind of um, kind of saw me as like an opportunity. You know, signing and back in my hometown. You know, yeah. it it link it it fits. Um, I think, and I think it did work. Um, with what they were with what they were trying to do with the rebrand as well um with me coming back with me coming back home and stuff um so yeah i think it was time i think it was really good time and how it happened was uh, it was really really good for me um with where I, where i was in my career like, after playing with getting some good experience with london and wanting to kind of like you know have a have a more significant kind of role role this year um yeah all went hand in hand for me and i think i think it's i think it's worked out perfectly so far Oh, definitely. Other than other than fans, other than fans, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We talk about it so much about about the whole fan si situation. Just just wanting them there. Be, like we want to, you know. Me and Jake, like we've mentioned on other podcasts, we've mentioned about how, how we're going to try and you know sneak in in some aspects. <laughs> you know, yeah. we just we just want to be. We just want to see it, man. Just just because it's such a talented team, you know. It's such a talented team, and it'd just be a shame for no one to be there because the fans are so unique. It's mad. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know the fans are unique as well. Um, different here, so I can't wait. Can't wait for the for that energy to be definitely just us with playing. Just you know, can take us to the can take a team to the next level. Um, you know, having something to, the fans provide something to play for for me. Like um, yeah. you know, you know as long as it's cool me being home. You know, I play for my friends, playing for my family, but. Do you know what I mean, playing for the city and, and having that kind of like loyalty with fans is like, I love that, mate. I love it gives, that. Uh, gives you that extra boost on it. So, do you know, and I think as well in Manchester, because it's weird, we're, we're kind of like, it's weird, you know, we're tribal about our own people, aren't we? It's really mad. And, you know, yeah. when like you see, see like, you know, young Phil Foden from Man City, he gets so many plaudits and, you know, do you know what I mean? Things like that. It's, it's absolutely mental. Like, and I think with you, it'd be like, we're really proud of our hometown heroes. So I, I think you get such a great reception. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate the kind of the reception I've had um, coming back because I wasn't quite sure. At first, I wasn't quite sure like how it was going to be like reacted to stuff like that. Um, but yeah, open arms, open arms, man. So yeah, oh, yeah, there's no. So that kind of brings me on to the next bit of like, how does the sort of? Because I'm not going to go too much into London and stuff like that. You know, it's you know experience to that. But how does the setup? How does the training compare? Everything like that. Uh, London have got quite a good setup as well. With um, they've got kind of like a a new ish. Uh, relationship with the University of East London, right. uh, so they, you know, they kind of practice there, and then they play the games at the at the Copper Box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, good, good program, good coaches, yeah. um, and you know, you see what they're doing doing this year as well. So uh, with the with the new investment that they they've managed to get, um, but yeah, um, you, I mean, yeah. you went wild against them. You went absolutely wild away. I <laughs> like, like went off, man. Like, Jesus. I thought, I, I thought, I saw, someone, someone shoved a bloody firecracker at Whelan's ass. What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I definitely went down there trying to, trying to, <laughs> trying to prove a point. I wasn't like thinking yeah. about like, playing against my old team. I tried just not to think about yeah, it and just, yeah. just play. Um, but it was nice to, to have a good, have a good game. It would have been the better to, to win, which I thought we should have done. Yeah. Um, Considering we were up, you know, almost twenty points at yeah, one. It's crazy, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was crazy. You know, that, that stuff happens on a road against good teams, and, and they stuck, they did a good job to stick with it. Dirk Williams had a, had a great game. Oh, so yeah. you played against the ex NBA players, man. You know what I mean? You, you know, you played against against great great players. You know, sometimes you know things just just come off like that. I actually saw something nice at the end. Like I don't know what he said to you. Like Justin Robinson came over to you and like said, and I just imagined him saying something like, "Bloody hell, mate! What, what, what was that all about?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, just you know, just he's a, he's a really chilled out guy, man. He, he's he's grounded. Um, he's you know you probably see it from watching his games. Like he's never too high, never too low. Just just composed. You know, yeah. just does just work. Um, so even like chatting to him after the game was just kind of like yeah, good good to see you doing well. Good firstly, it was kind of just like good to see you. Um, uh, okay. good to catch up. Good to see you doing well. You know, yeah. he gets it. He's 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 probably. Similar guy to me in London, you know, he's a hometown guy in London. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I learned, yeah, I learned a lot from him and in, in kind of like what he's doing, um, you know, down there and what I need to do, kind of like here in Manchester. So, so yeah. Before we uh, carry on, Jake, do you reckon um, young man's got a delivery or what? What do you reckon? Pretty good timing, that isn't it? It's pretty good timing. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know. I saw I saw someone peek around the back. I don't know whether he's got a delivery or not. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just stood there the whole time waiting. I was trying to like, I was trying to like shove it back out. I know. I saw you like go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I, waiting, I was waiting for like an entry point. <laughs> <laughs> How cute is that? Yeah, no, right in the front. Oh, I am pretty cute to be fair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, kid. Welcome to the Wing Squad from your boys, all things giant. Yeah, boy. Happy birthday. Oh, what's this? That was great timing, guys. <laughs> oh, it's a little happy birthday to you for that. Like that. Oh, these smell good. I can't, I can't, I can't wait. wait. I think I was on you the first time I... First time I saw the wings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've said it before. You know, it's like, where's mine? Uh, Jack and Ulf's wings. Like that. And now, because we got you the cake, that's it. Ulf's going to be mad. I felt a bromance <laughs> coming with Ulf, and now he's going to be fuming at us. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be a bit salty. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, man. Yeah. Very official well, wings. Yeah, official, man. 
I, I, th- I think we might have to get it, um, like a little a little has- hashtag shaved into the side of my, on my head during lockdown because <laughs> my hair's getting a bit out of control. So I might just get like a hashtag wound squad sprayed in, yeah, you know. Why not? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Go for it. If you've got room back there with the, you know, with the mullet. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I, I, I think she might be very mad at me and I might be single by the end of this podcast, mate, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you, we talk about the, uh, you, you, came, you came from the magic, um, you said you touched on it before when you went over to Germany, um, was it four seasons you played in Germany? Two seasons, two, two seasons I played over, yeah, two different teams, two different cities, yeah. So, when, when you were over there, I had a quick look, um, and it said you were listed as semi-pro, now... Were you playing and did you have a job? Uh, and or were, were you fully dedicated to the role of playing the basketball? Yeah, no, no, I was playing full time. I was, I was, I was there as a pro. Um, right. How, I mean, it was, I was playing kind of like the third league in Germany. Um, so I guess, I don't know, I, I guess it's looked at in some other countries, um, maybe as a semi pro league because they only bring in like two or three kind of like imports and the rest of the guy, guys are German guys and all of them kind of like were working as well as playing. Um, so I guess the semi-pro aspect is like based on kind of like 60% of the team. Um, yeah, yeah. Then the guys that they bring in, you know, they bring in pros that, have, you know, I've played with pros that have been in, in, in some good leagues that have ended up playing there as just, you know, just a pro on, on a team of, of other, amongst other semi-pros. Um so yeah, that's kind of like where where that side comes from, I guess. So you you were like doing some plumbing on the side, like just to keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine you know, wheeling, just, t- just tipping up at some German guy's house, like uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be um, sick. Um, <laughs> oh no, that'd be sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving through Germany, obviously you landed back. You explained before, um, you landed back in Manchester. Danny approached him and was like, look, play the last 10 games for us. Um, I think then, we, we, we were all right. We were doing pretty well. Uh, I was looking at our win percentage. Uh, 100, 100 win percentage. Okay. Not, not, too, not too shabby. Um, and this season, at the moment, we're at a 500 win percentage. With you shooting yeah. 51% this season as opposed to your 38% in the, in the first season with us. So it yeah. obviously shows that you've been through, um, you know, a lot of training, a lot of practice, going to Worcester, going to London and gaining that experience. When, when you came back, um, what, what was your aim? Was your aim, obviously we discussed it, that um, there's a lot of talks from different people, especially on social media, with the fans as well, that if there was a, such a thing... You've already won six man of the league um, in the BBL. Now, mm. where, where do you sit with obviously taking out injuries and what's happened recently with other injuries? Where do you sit in your role? Like, do you, do you, you know your role? You know you come off the bench, or if you change your game plan up, you know you start in. Like, are you happy with whatever, or are you just straight up like, this is what I'm made to do? Yeah, no, like, my so my kind of mentality mentality kind of like coming back it wasn't like oh i need to be the guy i need to 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 kind of like go crazy or you know whatever it it wasn't that it wasn't based on like me scoring you know x amount of points a game or doing or playing x even x amount of certain amount of minutes it was it was just about me kind of like progressing yeah playing more minutes but what my role um it was more of like a role increase kind of like I knew what I could do. I knew I knew what I could do. So after playing two years, I knew what I was I was capable capable of doing. Um, you know, it's something that as an athlete that I, could, I can just feel. You know, just from being out there. Um, so coming back, I was just kind of like, you know, let's go home. Let's let's have a, a more significant role in within a team. Um, and and let's just run it. Let's just run from there. See how it, see see how that goes. And and you know, I'm eager, really eager, to, you know, to meet the guys. Um, when they were when they were getting in, just to kind of integrate myself amongst them, um, and, and and you know once the thing about being playing basketball and being on a team is 
you know everybody has to kind of like know their role everyone has to to do a certain job um so me having that six man role and coming in is is just something you know something that I've been used to uh, you know on different teams and I just kind of just I just kind of said to myself look I'm just going to own that role um and once I'm out there I just you know play hard and do what I can and, and hopefully you know things will just things will just fall into place um so I'm, I'm okay. shooting the right more about Definitely. shooting the right you know making the right decisions and stuff like that yeah, you definitely. I mean, I'm just looking at your stats now this season, mate. Averaging, you're doing 26, put, um, 26 minutes, 25 seconds, 16.4 points, 3.7 rebounds, 1.6 assists for a shooting guard. Which I'm assuming that that's you kind of what you want to be. That's that, that's fantastic numbers, mate. You're playing, you know, just over half, well six minutes over half the game. You know, averaging 16 points. You know, I actually find, find it funny. You know, 1.6 1. 6 assists, and one of them, one of them assists was that one to a. Uh, Ulfi on the uh, when he dunked it against Cheshire, and I was just laughing because you know when you did that, you know when like some uh, I, when you're dribbling up and you're getting ahead of steam and you think I'm going to lose the ball here, I'm going to lose the ball here, and then you just did that thing where you just put it behind your back and it just controlled everything, and all of a sudden Ulf's just gone, go on, go on. <laughs> like, the, way, you... <laughs> the way you said that kind of like is, is so fitting because yeah. I caught the ball on the fast break. I thought, all right push the ball and then I saw the guy coming across me I'm thinking all right okay I'm gonna have to do something here just yeah. to kind of you know I'm, I've rushed I've rushed to get out and he's kind of like just jumped in front of me so I just thought the quickest kind of go to me was wrap it behind the back yeah. and as soon as I, I kind of like looked up I was kind of like yeah you know what <laughs> yeah, that was good <laughs> so much space in right now there goes off dime and you yeah. know I knew I knew I knew what I was getting from off once like, once I gave him the ball it, it just yeah the play just kind of like it just fell into place, like yeah. And yeah. It, I, I didn't really even see it coming to be honest. It was just kind of like I reacted to something, and then it was just like you know, here we go. And, and you know what I like about it as well is the after reaction, like everyone just give it the oh, and then all like slapped you, and it's just like what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know his own strength. I know, I know. He's, just, <laughs> he's like he's like full on close, like you. Yeah, you probably see me and Jack doing it. We kind of like yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That was in it. Do it to Dave. Dave's like flinging yeah. me out of the way, flinging him out of the way. It's just a full-on clothesline. I'm like, you've just, you've just done the dunk. He's supposed to be doing that to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. That's facts. Oh, yeah, big dog. he's a big they're, dog. They're great numbers, mate. They're absolutely fantastic numbers, mate. And that kind of brings us when you're talking about, obviously, you know, you've got a real good. So you could, you what was it you call it? Uh, the kennel club, you know, you three, uh, kind of there, you know, and. <laughs> So that kind of brings me on to like, on and off the court, like who you're finding, you know, like, I mean, obviously all the guys seem like you're in a really tight, close-knit group, but like, obviously yeah. like, you guys get lifts together and stuff like that, don't, don't you know, are them, them two like being massively, like, you know, part of your success at, at Giants second time around, yeah? Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%, coming home and having a couple of guys, you know, that I know um, has definitely, sorry, I think I've lost you. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, has definitely like helped. Um, knowing those two, and they, they, yeah, they, they've been like, been like my support. I like to, I like to say. Um, yeah, yeah. They, you know, they know how to, they know how to communicate with me, and they know how to, you know, how to get me going and stuff. And when, you know, when I'm even at some points when I've been down or whatever and stuff like that, you know, they're they're there to pick, they're there to pick back up. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely part of my success. Yeah, definitely this this year. Sure. That also kind of comes on to another question because we do do this little thing on here, Jay, don't we? Coach's minute. Coach's minute time, <laughs> like, yeah, man. You know, you know uh, again, you know, absolutely big, massive shout out to the coaching team and stuff, especially uh, Danny Byrne. You know, being so res you know responsive with us and everything. We get a yep. couple of questions. We get a couple of questions from him to, to each player. You know, so I let Jake do these. Um, or do you want me to do, Jake? Would no, you, you go. You go for it, mate. Yeah, I'll go, mate. So, first one is the one he always asks: "Is uh, how is it played for Danny?" Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah it's really good. I, I knew I knew what I was going to get um, playing with Danny straight off the bat. So, you know, I played with him before, like I said, in that in that ten game kind of spree that I had with him. So, um, coming back, we knew we, we were on the same page with what with what I needed to do this season and what my role was going to be. Um, I think as soon as I kind of left London, we you know we we always, we always kept in touch over the past couple of years. Um, 
And yeah, you know, he, he also thought was on board with the rebrand and, and bringing me back home and stuff like that. He was, he was on board with all that stuff. And, and he, most importantly, he thought it was the right time for me as a player to kind of like come back and, and do whatever based on his evaluation of, you know, my game and stuff. So, yeah. So, yeah. Working either way. It's definitely working. Yeah. You know, he seems like, like a good coach to play under. You know, he's, he's very, no, very knowledgeable from what I spoke to him and, you know, everything down. So I know, obviously, it's more part of the club, but, you know, the recruiting is absolutely fantastic and stuff. Um, and the the second question, actually, is, uh, what's the team, mate? <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, I was I waiting thought, for it. You had a dead serious face on then, and I tried putting mine on. <laughs> and then I just thought, this is great, because we just sent you wings. There we go. <laughs> it's wings for tea. It's wings yeah. for tea. Oh. All we need to know, all Danny needs to know is I'm eating good. All everyone all everyone needs to know is I'm eating good. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love that. What, what's the backstory <laughs> behind it? What, what, what is it? It, it? it was um, when I was going to be mic'd up. Um, it was something that we were thinking, we were contemplating of slipping into into the game at Cheshire. Oh, I love uh, that. <laughs> it, 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 it really didn't really happen. Um yeah, in the game, but it was something that we were kind of like practicing all week and and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm imagining that the training. Just practice that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, t t t testing, oh. testing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're not going to practice that fantastic defense that worked that free two zone we was playing. No, we'll just sack it off and have Jordan at the side practicing, saying, "What's the thing?" <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, but the whole week we were thinking about once I found out I was being mic'd up and stuff, we were just thinking about stuff that we could might we could probably get in there and stuff like that. Oh, um, so I, yeah, I we, we, we did do some we did do some 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 prep for Cheshire as well. <laughs> <laughs> well I could tell, like, especially at that first quarter, Jesus. But like yeah. it, uh, we've talked about that mic'd up game a few times. Like we didn't even know that was coming until we saw it, like, you know, um, yeah. big shout out to the BBL yeah. Buzz, you know, that, that was fantastic, you know. And yeah. the the um, he was just, I mean, it's the bit, I, I've mentioned it a few times, it's the bit <laughs> where you just, they have no idea what they're doing. They don't know um, what they're like, doing. <laughs> on the actual clip, I don't know if it's Mike McCall or Karen Ross walks past, and it's like he agrees with you. <laughs> he just walks behind you. He's got no idea. He's just like, yeah, neither do I, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we were just getting, I was just getting into it, and I, was, I think I was right by their bench as well. Yeah. Um, so Kind of yeah, I wanted to get in there, get in their heads, and I know I could see Ben getting frustrated as well with with what the guys were doing as well. So I was kind of just yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does just go downhill, Ben, when he gets frustrated, doesn't he? As well, he just he, you can see him losing it big style. Yeah, yeah, he was losing <laughs> again. He was yeah, he, he was having it with them that game, I think. Um, but yeah, props to Ben. Props to Ben. I go way, go way back with Ben as well. So. Yeah. Back to the magic days, he's a Manchester kid as well. So, uh, Manchester I, was magic. Gonna, I was gonna bring this up because obviously I was looking at Manchester Magic alumni, and I, you, you, I think you're too planned for us, mate. I think you've planned more than us because you're getting ahead oh, yeah. of every question we're getting at. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was looking at the Magic alumni, I saw that Ben, obviously, we saw Ben Thomas was on there. I sent it to Jordan, I was like. It, was he a coach? Was he a player? Like, and I was like, "All right, we'll bring it up with Whelan. That'll be a perfect time to opportunity to do it." So, I might edit this yeah, bit out and then start again and be like, "So we found out." <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, he was a he was a player, man. He was a player. He was a good. He was a good little player as well. Um, back then, yeah. So it's, it's it's good to see him. It's good to see him transition to to his coaching stuff over the last few years with, with Cheshire. Is, sure. that, is that something you ever see yourself doing in the future? What, going to Cheshire? Uh, no, 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 going to coaching. <laughs> so sorry you about that, guys. <laughs> mate, if, you go, go to, if you go to Cheshire, mate, you're dead to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no plan, no plans of that. No plans of that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, transition to coaching. Uh, I don't know. It's, it, it's in the air. I mean, as a player, I think it's, I've always enjoyed coaching and, and you know, I've done a few camps and stuff with, with Magic. Um, I could probably see myself as a good coach. You know, I have, I have a younger brother. You know, kind of, you know, I like to coach, I've had experience kind of coaching him up as well. And yeah, and, and, but, um, yeah I can see myself going into some coaching, maybe. Um, but I'm, I'm currently studying my master's in um, sports business management and policy. Um, so ideally, ideally, I want to be on like, the management side of 
of of kind of like a basketball club uh, if I can stay in, in basketball um, yeah that's kind of like where I kind of want to transition to that's brilliant that's brilliant news that, that you know because obviously people don't know what kind of goes on behind the sort of scenes at like you know clubs and you know the pro players it's great to hear that you know you're studying on the side and you, it's, that's brilliant yeah. That, mate yeah, definitely, definitely. You can't. It's what you can't do forever. But if I can, if I can, you know, basketball in this country is something that is something that needs needs work. Is something that needs you know knowledgeable kind of like ex players and stuff to come, you know, to to give back and put keep pushing the game forward. So it's like, you know, grow the sport. That's that's the main thing. Definitely, definitely. You know, we've talked about it before. Now we've talked about you know, yeah, we, it's, it's only just started to be realised now, but it needs to just keep being pushed. Like, and you know, I find as well, like especially with myself, you know, a couple of years ago, I lost the love for the game, and I thought, you know, I just completely stopped doing it. I started coaching football and stuff like that, and yeah. I, and then I, I thought I got an opportunity. Um, big shout out to Tameside Vikings, by the way. I got a big opportunity to uh, help run a club. Um, yeah. and and you know coaching kids and it's just so we've got a few kids at Magic now and it's just so rewarding you know so re and it just got our love back for it you know I now love watching it again you know I now love love you know doing this you know podcast again I love playing it again you know I played in the Mabel again last year it's just brilliant you know yeah. to get back into yeah. it you know and Hopefully, I speak to my mate Pilko maybe getting back into National League again next season <laughs> but yeah you wow. know just but yeah, no, it's it's just one of them things. It's, it's such an easy sport to lose the love for, you know, um, but also an easy one to get back as well. And I just found from my personal experience that that coaching thing just did that for me, you know. It is, it is definitely in this country, like you said, it is. Uh, you know, where it's still a small sport, it's definitely something that it's something that you can easily lose lose love for. You know, I, I played with a lot of guys and uh, a lot of guys, you know, some guys that are not still playing today, some guys. They're not for obviously for obvious reasons, um, but some that probably may still be playing if if they had different set of, set of circumstances. Maybe you know trials and tribulations of being a British basketball player. Um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of weight. There's a lot of weight. Barriers. There's a lot of ways of talent. There's a lot. There's a lot of barriers. Um, so yeah. So at the same time, I feel blessed that you know I'm still I'm still you know have having the opportunity to play and in my hometown. Do you know what I mean? So Brilliant. so yeah. So oh, man, so no. Um, I'm just gonna. I, I, I was gonna move like a, a nice little transition there, but that's quite a nice little. Oh yeah. Little speech. What to give it a moment there? <laughs> I, I think I think we should put some really nice ambient music in the background. Like, that I know, yeah, I'm going with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm now I'm now gonna bring the uh, the tone of it down. Uh, have you got your phone handy with you there, mate? Uh, I'm I'm using my phone. Oh, uh, right, okay. Um, I'll, I'll, all right, I'll show it to the camera then instead. I can do that, I think. Um, I, we put up, obviously, the questions uh, to try and get in for you or any kind of memories that people have with you. And you'll probably guess who it is from the, the picture, but they said, oh, can you send this picture in um, and let him know who sent it as well? So if you can just see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Ginge. Ginge DJ. James Fit. That's him. I know he sent that in. I know you know he played Michael Jackson when we went when, when we went to uh, the away game at Worcester. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. This oh. guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he just he yeah. just replied saying, I've got this for you, but didn't reply for a while and I was like all right, I'm, I'm, I'm on pins now. Then he sent it to me, and I was like, "Right, I'm going to send it in. I'm going to get a live reaction. That's absolutely amazing." <laughs> I, I think I think the best thing is he said, "Can you please let him know who sent it in?" And, and you knew straight away, man. It's... I know, I know, I know who sent, and I knew it was in. <laughs> I challenge anyone of any podcast out there to do better digging on personal lives than us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Jeez, man, that was crazy. Yeah, that was me. That was me in year. What was it? Me in year eight. Yeah, looking like a Jackson Five. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> if it's an edit consolidation, mate, I think we've got a, a new background for our phones. So, cheers, Ginge. Nice one for that, man. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna throw some uh, fan questions at you. Um, some of them pretty simple. Some of them a bit more deep. Uh, 
nothing trying to catch you out here, just this is what we've been sent in. Um, yeah, yeah. First one, I'm going to ease you into it. You versus Hudson, one-on-one. -on -one. First game to 11, no rules, and you call your own fouls. Who's, been, who's winning? One word answer. <laughs> no rules. <laughs> no rules. No blood, no foul. Look, look me, I'm winning <laughs> against... <laughs> I'm beating Jack in a, every, day, every day of the week. <laughs> unless, unless the no rules contains like MMA fighting or something like that because he'd have he'd have me off in a fight <laughs> <laughs> brilliant <laughs> um, I think one that's been kind of floating around social media for a long long time now uh, BBL All-Star Weekend East and West or North versus South I saw this and I, I, I'm saying North versus South North versus South I, 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 I'm, I'm right there with you mate yeah I agree I say North, North versus yeah, north versus south. Um, but I also kind of thought, well, I wouldn't know where the east, where would the east and west even? Yeah, I think it'd just be split. Just look at Birmingham and just go straight up, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd have yeah. to wonk it. Yeah, it just won't work. Um, but I also saw like a like a British west of, versus the rest of the world um, type thing that they could do or someone suggested it on, I think I saw it on Twitter or something like that uh, for, I think that yeah that would be a great idea as well actually uh, it'd be good to kind of see you know what what the, the best kind of best of the British uh, can compete against the, the best of the Americans so or other imports you know I think that would be that would be a good one and, and I think you can actually do that just within the BBL as well and just split Brits over there all the imports over there and just have a game I think that'd be great man yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, moving on to how has this weekend results impacted the team? Yeah, yeah, tough weekend. Um, it was tough to tough to watch. Um, sitting out, I was just kind of like, oh man, I never never wanted to play so bad. Um, you know, I hate having my guys out there. You know, struggling. Um, but yeah, uh, we we. We were down three. We're down three. Three players at the end of the day. Three pretty, pretty important players um, in terms of like you know the rotation that we've had thus far this season. Um, so yeah, we 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 just kind of like have to sweep this. Kind of said you know we have to sweep this weekend under the rug and and keep going. Um, it's one weekend. You know we, we knew we were going to face trials this season uh, with COVID. We knew we were going to trade. You know you're always going to face trials in any kind of reg not regular season um, with injuries and stuff like that. Um, you, you you get on with it, you know. We be we be professional about it, um, and you know we get back to get back to the drawing board, and you know get hopefully you know hopefully get our guys back, uh, including myself, you know, uh, fit and healthy, and, and we get back to, to what we were doing before, um, and even grow from, and hopefully grow and get even better than what we was doing before. So we still got goals, we still got plenty to play for. Um, that's the, that's the only way we can kind of kind of look it. I think. <laughs> I think just to add on to that, um, Whelan, um, you know, we, we're five more games winning than we did last season. You know, we've had much, much, much worse seasons than this and we've still had the same fan base going through. So I think personally, from my perspective, and obviously uh, I, I, I'm sure Jordan will agree with me here, you know, we're watching a team that clearly is working for each other and obviously, obviously, we, we all know that you, you, you're out there to play for the fans. You're out there to play for, you know, the championships, the the table spots, and all of your different um, trophies and cups. But at the end of the day, you can see that you're playing for each other. And you know, seeing seeing you and Hexham and Jack all all and Britain and all that all all on the on the uh, bench, not like not being able to help. Obviously, you're gonna feel yeah, a bit, yeah. look like helpless. You know what I mean? Like you, you're just watching us go from. Like a, 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 quite frankly, a terrible first half to come out in the third quarter, and you think, I think I've got to write an apology letter to my entire street because I was screaming the house down on the third quarter. Um, yeah. But exactly like we've seen with every other team in the league right now, you know, Plymouth went on a terrible run, and I've come back two or three games on a row again. And you've just said it yourself; it's it's how we move forward and how we just go. All right, cool, that's done. Yeah, we lost. Let's go next game. Like. And yeah. it, it's nice to hear that. And I know sometimes that can come out as kind of 
not quite candid enough, like it's, it's quite scripted, but you can tell from your reaction and speaking to the other guys and the other players, you know, like you, you, you're, there, you're there to the end and you're there to go, right, okay, next up, let's go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's the mentality. And, and on top of that, just to build on it, you know, our young, our young guys, our young guys get... Our young guys getting in there and, and playing minutes, man. I was proud of every single one of them. You know, what I mean, for going down and fighting for Plymouth, um, you know, until until the fourth. And it's not even to say that they couldn't. They gave themselves a chance to win a game. The way I the way I see it, yeah, yeah it didn't work out, out work out that way. You know, we just came up we came up a bit short, and the game blew out of perspective. But um, but yeah, I was proud of proud of everyone's effort. Proud of the effort that we gave in the third quarter yesterday. Um, although yesterday, you know, we saw as a winnable game. Um, with Cheshire missing a couple of guys as well, um, but yeah, I think I think it's it's something that we may even grow from. It's something that we might even grow from having guys having those experience. You know, facing adversity at the end of the day is where you, is where you grow. So, so yeah, that's that's where that's where I'm at with it. Obviously, you talk, you talk about the young guys coming through there and getting minutes. What what if what is if any um, what is your role in mentoring those guys as players? So from you, obviously the rest of the kennel club and the Americans that all the way up to coach. Like what what is what is your personal like? Um, what's the word? What's your grat like gratification? Role. Let's say yeah, role yeah. <laughs> um, like what what's your role with the, with with the young guys coming up? Like uh, do you see yourself as like you, you want to, you want to make them grow, or do you see yourself as a you know, someone they can come to and talk to about anything, not just about basketball. Like, where, where, where do you slot in there, man? Yeah, definitely, definitely um, a bit of both. Definitely trying to, you know, take a couple of the guys under under the wing um, in terms of just like just as people getting to know each other, um, being there for each other. But you know, especially you know, they're, they're from they're from this area as well. The the guys that well, other than than Zach, he's he's from Birmingham. The guy, the other guys that we have are from are kind of local to me as well. Yeah. With Joe being from you know up in Bolton way and and the other lads from Liverpool way, um, so yeah, definitely. First things first is like getting getting to know them as people. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, yeah, just kind of sharing uh, my insight with with experiences that I've had and and looking at where they're at, um, analyzing myself where I was at um, at their age, um, and kind of just getting them to do stuff that I didn't do. Um, maybe that I would, things that I would change and and maybe kind of like in terms of like being an, a professional now um, and being the professional I am now, um, hopefully they can they can get there, get there quicker than, than what I did. Um, so that's kind of like my mentality when I, when I talk to them or when I tell them, tell them something that, you know, they can, they can be better at or whatever in practice all week. That's, that's where I kind of come from. When, 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 you, when you say when you tell like try and show them like what you did and what not to do, did that run from basketball? Or did it run like down to like look, please never wear these green shoes like this. You'll get ridiculed <laughs> online. Like oh, I'm not saying you've got a bad fashion sense, by the way. You've got a lovely fashion sense, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah. You know what? These young boys these days, they're, they're, in terms of fashion, they're different. I tell I tell Ty every 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 time I see him with some. With some new shoes on, like, I'm like, you, 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 guys, you guys are different. I wasn't even like that when I was your age. Like, <laughs> Don't see how you was at their age. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you, see, <laughs> you see what you see what I was like. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah they're, they're diff different. But, so it's, it's, it's nice to see. Coming on the court at number three thousand four hundred and forty-six, it's Jordan Whalen. <laughs> <laughs> With the with the fro. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, get a head. <laughs> what did you say, the man? Sorry. I said get a headband on me as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Ben Wallace. That's full Ben Wallace. Yeah. Oh. Thousand three. I love that. <laughs> Don't even go there, man. The name of the days. <laughs> uh, I think that pretty much wraps up the fan questions. Um, yeah. Have you got anything yeah. else to say that you wanna? That you want to go for? Yeah. I might just hit the light. <laughs> there we go. Just, just, just realised you guys couldn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> That's better, mate, right? Yeah, there we go. Do, do, do you want to start the interview again, mate? Yeah? So, do you want to <laughs> back to the top? <laughs> so, yeah, is there anything you want to add? Like, obviously, this, this whole show just came from me and Jordan 
trying to sort something out, going live, but like a pre-game show on, on the Facebook fans group. And then it's grown into this, you know, we're, we're interviewing guys and we're talking to the players, the coaches on daily. Um, is there anything you want to say from your side of things, like to get out there to the fans, to any fans of you or fans of the Basketball League in general? Feel free to big us up as well, mate. Feel yeah. free, you know, because... because you know, I'll definitely call that now. <laughs> No, no, no. Honestly, yeah, I think um, it's good to have like a, kind of like a more official Giants-based kind of podcast. Um, so amongst amongst kind of like a couple others that are out there, but there are other other podcasts going on that you know they're off on you know different tangents and stuff like that. But I like I like the focus of this one. With, you know, it started off well with the with the players and stuff like that. Um, but it's all about engagement for me, for me. Keep keep engaging. Keep engaging with people. At the end of the day, you guys are promoting the sport. So, um, hey, you gave us our motto as well. You gave us our motto. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see, yeah, I see, yeah, actually, I peep that. Yeah, I peep, yeah. yeah. yeah I You've got that. your wings now. You can't copyright it. <laughs> <laughs> by the fans, by the fans, for the, for the fans. Yeah, yeah, for the fans. Yeah, for, yeah, it was you that. So you can't copyright yeah. it now. You've got the wings. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got the wings. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the non-disclosure, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Bro, keep promoting, man. Keep promoting us. Keep interacting. I think I think this is kind of like a good interaction for the fans to have. Um, seeing as like you know they're not there at the minute. Um, yeah. So for them to kind of stay engaged and keep engaged, you know. So when when they get back, they feel like they haven't missed anything. So yeah, yeah appreciate appreciate you guys, man. Keep doing good work. Thank you very much, man. That and it's, it, I think it comes without saying, like. Us lot sat at home, where we, we fully appreciate you guys, you know, we sat there, um, sat there in our shorts and t-shirts, you know, eat scrambling wings, you know, little little tea towel on the t-shirt, make sure we don't get on that nice clean Giants merch that we've got, you know. Um, yeah, short, short shorts, Jake, I should have got my own picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know too much about me, I, I'm, I'm waiting for you to start a podcast <laughs> to get me on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah my life seriously we, we genuinely do appreciate it and uh thank you for finally responding to our instagrams um no i'm, I'm joking man <laughs> i'm doing my best i'm doing my best i, know, doing... I mean like we, we, we know that we know you're a, you're a busy guy uh obviously you've mentioned in this show like you, you're doing your masters you're a, you're a, a full-time athlete with he just me. wanted to feel wanted. He just wanted <laughs> to feel wanted. <laughs> look at all these notifications. Look, look. Oh, no, yeah. oh look at me. I'm popular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, friends. <laughs> He's not even like that. I'm just... I'm just <laughs> no, we really appreciate it, mate. We, honestly, mate. Like yeah, like Jake said, it's gone off fantastically. You know, we yep. to get the shares off, off guys, you know, you know, technically, you know, we, we idolise, we want to be people like, like you guys, you know, so, you know, Love we really that. appreciate everything uh, from yourself and the team because I know, I know you talk about it, I know you share it and stuff, so from us, mate, massive appreciation. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, so guys, thank you very much for listening. Uh, this was Jordan Whelan, Jake Nichols and Jordan Frost. Thank you very much for that, guys. Peace. Good stuff. You and that was this week's episode with Jordan Whelan. Thank you so much uh, to our little hometown hero. He's been absolutely amazing this episode. You know, he took his time out on his birthday um, and just sat down, made time for us and had a really, really nice chat with him. So thank you very much for that, man. As always, shout out to Seb, who's working hard, sharing our stuff, liking, commenting on everything we do and producing all of our artwork for us. So thank you so, so much to, to Seb. As always, he's absolutely killing it for us at the moment. Um, one last shout out to Louisa Jane Sports Massage. Um, as you heard in the episode, you know, some of the players are going through injuries and they need to get that rehab in. They need to get them really helping the team out. So thank you so much. And thanks for your shares as well, Louisa. It's fantastic, honestly. Yeah, uh, and uh, she, she did message us asking um, if, sorry, we messaged her saying if, if she needed any apprentices and she was like, yeah, I've got space for two lads. So <laughs> watch out, Giants. I think we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Harry, um, who's our official club photographer, HC Captures, you might know him better as. 
Um, we always give him credit, you know, he, we're using all of his pictures in Seb's edits and whatever we repost is all of his camera work and amazing work. We do have some exciting in the pipeline from Harry uh, with a couple of our ideas that we shared with him and he's got them recorded and sent a few over to me. So that's going to be incredible when that comes out. Uh, shout out to all the fans that sent in questions today. Uh, big shout out to Ginge down at Worcester for sending in that marvellous picture of Whelan. Um, as you can see or hear from his reaction, it was it was much appreciated and he knew straight away, mate. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, shout out to baby brother. Sorry, mate. It's uh, John's words, not mine. Uh, it's a shout out to Patrick Whelan for that amazing bit of information to, to catch him out on the uh, driving test theory. Um, as always, shout out to the franchise, to the Giants, to the coaches, to the staff, to ev everybody that works for them, with them, volunteers, and all the players. You know, we're, we're really still in a bit of awe, but we're really appreciative, appreciative of everything that you engage with us and keep in contact with us and share, share our stuff. So thank you guys. Definitely. And, you know, just from, again, I say every podcast from a personal point of view, this isn't, you know, obviously just to, you know, certain people or anything. Everyone's been so responsive and I just want to thank you for that. You know, whether it's funny questions, you know, little conversations, you know, Brian asking for wings, you know what I mean? We just, <laughs> you know, we're just, we were just so happy to be in contact with you and, you know, um, Everything's just fantastic, guys. You know, uh, also shout out to all the other other podcasts. You know, everyone who who are giving us shouts and stuff. We can we really appreciate the love. It's, it's absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, we never thought it was going to take off like this, but it has, and it's all down to you guys. So yeah, thank you. And uh, by the time this comes out, uh, you will see and hear a, a lot more of us on social media because we now have a Facebook page. Um, just one more social media for us to run. Um, in between everything else we're juggling with, you know, Jordan's kids, uh, Jordan's job while I'm sat at kids. home. Kids. kids, kids, sorry, single mate, single <laughs> kid, uh, child. <laughs> um, so it's going to be good. I'm going to give all the shout outs later on with our social media. All of the links will be in the description for you to go straight to them. Give us a follow, like, comment, share it, anything you, anything you can to help us out is honestly so so much appreciated so thank you very much for that and last but not least you heard it in the podcast not trade by tr not trademarked by jordan whelan who give us our tagline for the fans by the fans um shout out to the fans of being responsive uh liking everything sending questions in absolutely everything you've done so thank you very much guys also guys one more thing before we go don't forget you know we're still on the lookout for sponsors if you feel like you know you can you can help us out in any sort of way. We're not after loads of money, you know. Just just thing, you know. Ways we can you know share your business and we can sh and you can share ours, you know. So this would be the spot now where you'd be put in and advertised. So yeah, if you got any inquiries, anything small or large, just give us a shout. Thank you very much, guys. As always, take it easy from me. Stay safe. Stay positive. Cheers, guys.